how am I going to break the news that I don't know what this is worth? And I go, well, what are you asking for it? And he goes, oh, I was just going to give it to you. <laughs> HGTV lied to me, okay? I thought it was going to be quick. It was not quick and painless, believe me. Yeah. So welcome, Ashley Moreno. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? I'm doing amazing. You have yeah. no idea. Like, if you would have told me two or three years ago I would be interviewing with Jerry Norton, I would have laughed in your face because, <laughs> whoo. <laughs> Well, thank you. Yeah, it's pretty great to be able to talk to you. I'm excited because you were able to do your first deal and uh, got started, I think, just a few years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Back in 2020, mid-2020, I started doing the on-market deals um, where you you know connect with the realtor, do the double dip strategy. And I had a deal where it was pre-foreclosure, but I didn't know. And it ended up being a short sale. And when I brought my cash buyer, because I got it under contract sight unseen, mm -hmm. um, the front of the house was leaning. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I called the realtor because the cash buyer was like, sweetie, it's middle of the pandemic. No one's messing with anything with foundation issues. So whatever you think it's worth, it's not. Mm -hmm. And I was like, OK, so I tried to like get out of the contract. I did get out of the contract, but the realtor got like really angry with me. And new baby investor me was terrified because he was talking about suing. And I was like, Jeez. you know, freaking out. <laughs> so I quit. I did. I quit for a minute. But yeah. Well, and, you know, foundation issues are very common in Indianapolis. Uh, well, this was in Hammond, which is like Northwest Indiana by Chicago. Okay. But, but still, but still the, the, it's markets that have these older homes. Was it like a hundred year old home? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, cause I'm from Detroit and we have similar things where we have, you know, really old homes. And so in a market where you've got, you know, homes built pre-1960, especially like 1900, there's a lot of those homes have foundation issues. And so as a wholesaler, it's helpful knowing that because you kind of can go into those older homes. And now I just assume that they have issues like basement <laughs> issues or foundation issues because they probably do on some level, you know, but that's interesting about your real estate agent. You know, I've done a lot of work with agents and I found that some are super cool, easy to go, easy to work with. They'll let you renegotiate or terminate contracts. It's not a big deal. They get it. And other agents make a really big deal out of it and they have a real problem with it. So <laughs> I'll, never like that's what you had. <laughs> I'll never forget him ever. Yeah. You know, what's interesting, Ashley, is um, this probably was your experience, but with most people, we tend to be really intimidated by a contract and we think a contract, we think of legally binding and we think of like instantly in our mind, we think, well, if I violate a contract, then really bad things are going to happen, right? Like I'm going to go to jail. I'm going to get sued. They're going to come take me for everything. Like that's what we think of when we think of a contract. Um, but in real estate, typically, now someone could sue for non-performance, but it's very rare. It's very unlikely that anybody's ever going to do that. Typically what happens is you, the, the earnest money, if any, is at jeopardy. So mm -hmm. if you don't meet the obligations of the contract as the buyer, you would forfeit your earnest money. That's your collateral or good faith on the contract. Um, now, again, everybody can, people can sue for anything they want. It's just, it doesn't really make sense. And here's why. If a seller sues a buyer for non-performance on a contract, then it's going to have to go through the whole legal process. And in the, in the time frame, you can't, you can't sell that property because you can't sue a buyer trying to force them to buy and then go resell the property. So most sellers just aren't willing to go through the, the huge time, the expense and all of that to, um, you know, to pursue legal action for non-performance. So anyway, having said that, um, as a new investor, though, I can only imagine that must have been like frightening and terrifying and scary <laughs> to have an agent telling you that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I said, you know, because he kept going, like he started to get really loud and aggressive. And I was like, kind of like, I'm sorry, this is what happened. This is 
I mean, really, that's what the cash buyer told me. And your cash buyers are the ones that are going to tell you if, the, if it's a deal or not. And I said, he's like, well, she's going to sue you. And I said, well, she doesn't have it. She's got three houses in pre foreclosure. She has bigger issues, you know, like <laughs> he goes, it's only two. It's only two houses. <laughs> so <I was> like, <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, nobody's nobody in pre foreclosure is going to be suing anybody. That's for sure. Did, did that agent or anybody disclose, did the seller disclose that there were foundation issues? No. Yeah. No. So technically, if an agent is aware of foundation issues or any kind of problems and they don't disclose, then the seller and the agent could get in, could actually get in a lot of trouble. That agent could actually lose his license if he's aware of, of foundation problems and doesn't disclose that to a buyer. So if everybody who could get sued, it would probably be the agent. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In your situation. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you that really freaked you out and then you left real estate for a little bit. Yeah, kind of. Okay. And then and then what happened? How'd you come back? So I was in a Facebook group, which as a new investor, that is a gold mine, being in those real estate investor Facebook groups. And I saw someone talking about how they did a deal on the trunk of their car. And I was like, what? okay, hold on. So I start watching this lady and you keep seeing her in the group, you keep seeing her in the group. And so I finally like, all right, let me you know, take a bite. Let's see what's going on. Well, she was wholesaling mobile homes. Mm-hmm. And with mobile homes, it's not considered property. It's, it's a vehicle. They have VIN numbers, they have car titles. Yeah. And so as soon as you get a buyer and, you know, they view the property, they're interested, they just sign the back of the title. It's theirs. You get money. It's a close, instant close. And that just was so much easier to me because like chasing the deal down the pipeline, it's stressful. Anything, anything can and will go wrong <laughs> on the way to the closing table. So, yeah, so that's true. So a mobile home, because it's on a chassis and you can lift it and move it, it's considered more like a trailer than it is a house. Um, now, the minute you affix a mobile home onto real estate, so like if you were to put it on a permanent foundation or a slab, now it would have a deed and it would be real estate, right? But, but until then, it's, it's, it has a title like a car would. Uh, you're totally right. Now, Having said that, though, you know, mobile home deals can go sideways just like house deals can. You know what I mean? And it, well, and I, I, see what, I see what you're thinking. Your, your thought process was, man, that'd be way easier to just sign the back of a title and do a deal versus go through uh, an, entire, an entire closing with title search and title insurance and lien priority and all that. Mm-hmm. So then did you start? So then you started looking for mobile home deals. Right. So I finally invested in the bandit signs because mm-hmm. as a you know single woman, like who's going to put out the bandit signs? Me, like I'm going to get out of my car and go put these bandit signs out because they tell you to do it Friday night. You know, that way uh, the code enforcement doesn't take them over the weekend. So you get, you know, a couple days guaranteed that your signs are out. So I put out bandit signs with one of my friends. He went with me and I started putting them by people like uh Dollar Generals, McDonald's, places that people that live in mobile homes would shop like Walmart, you know, Target, wherever. And this old guy called me, Jerry, and I thought it was a prank because I forgot it it was on a Google voice number because that's what they, you know, told you to do. And this old guy is like, hey, my son passed away over Thanksgiving. I got this mobile home. Are you interested? So I had to turn into like business mode, like, oh, yeah, yeah, I, you know, not knowing what I was doing. And no, I bet no, I'm actually was- sorry. Did your did your sign say anything about mobile homes or did it just say, you know, I buy houses cash? We buy mobile homes. OK, then- OK. So you specifically were marketing for mobile home sellers. Gotcha. Yep. OK, good. Yep. So you get this call and it was like textbook seller, motivated seller. Right, right. His son had passed away. You could tell he was older. And um, my sister, I begged her to go with me. And we go through this place and it was just, 
in terrible condition. Like I didn't know what the value of a mobile home even could have been, but this place was in rough shape. Like there was just subfloor. There was no laminate, nothing. Was it so, in a park? Yep. It was oh. in a park and um, it had been vacant for like two, three weeks and it just stunk so bad. And I remember there were like holes in the floor. We had to like, you know, let him guide us through. Wow. And at the end, I'm like, what am I going to tell this guy? Like, how am I going to break the news that I don't know what this is worth? And I go, well, what are you asking for it? And he goes, oh, I was just going to give it to you. I was like, what? And my sister was like, all right, come on, Ashley, let's go. You know, you got to apply for the park. Because it's kind of like if you were to purchase a condo, you still have to, you know, get approved by the HOA and pay HOA you know, fees and kind of like if you were to apply for an apartment complex, it's the same qualifications. They yeah. just want to make sure you can pay their rent. Yeah, exactly. The the lot rent, not the mobile home, but the lot rent. So everybody, if you're listening to this right now and you're kind of new to mobile homes, think of two different things. Think of the trailer, which uh, you could buy that. There's financing, although that's very hard to get financing on mobile home trailers. Sometimes the trailer uh, manufacturers will do like in-house financing or whatever. But anyway, you got the trailer. However you get the trailer, then you move that to the park you want to be in and then you rent the spot from the tr- from the park owner. Okay. So so that's what Ashley's kind of talking about here. She this guy's willing to give her a free mobile home trailer. And so now she just got to go through the process of getting permission to and, and, and applying to then rent the spot. So okay, keep going Ashley. So it took three weeks for me to get approved because okay. it was right after Thanksgiving, but right before Christmas. And on December 23rd of 2021, I got approved. He gave me the title and that was my birthday. And I just remember sitting in the mobile home, like with the title, just staring at it, being like, what did I just do? And he literally, I, it, he literally signed it over to you for free. For free, he, you know, he was an older gentleman, so they're very organized. He had like a folder with the utility paperwork so that I knew all the gas and electric was paid up and everything. He had the taxes to make sure that the taxes were paid off of on it and everything and just signed it over. But think about it. He probably didn't want to pay the couple hundred dollar a month lot rent. So for him, just getting it out of his life was worth giving it to you for free. You know, that was still a benefit to him. Yep. That's exactly what he said. He was like, I'm older. I live off social security. I don't get a lot, but it was $535 a month. That lot rent was. Oh, it was that high. Okay. So was this a, was that kind of a nicer park or not really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That sounds kind of like on the high side for, for lot rent at a park. It's going up a lot because okay. I'm closer to the Illinois market too. $900 over there. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, that that does sound a lot higher than it's always than it's been. Okay. Mm-hmm. So then, did you start paying the lot rent? Yeah, I okay. did. And oh man, so I so they say like there's taught lessons and bought lessons, and I hadn't paid for any sort of formal mentorship for mobile homes. Okay. And that mobile home taught me everything that I needed to know. Um, I remember that day I started trying to clear stuff out because that's why as a new investor, one thing I would say is like, don't worry about how you're going to do it. Cause in the moment you figure some stuff out, like you genuinely do. So I started cleaning. You're saying out- you, you'll, you learn more as you go, as you do, you learn is what you're saying. You'll look, you'll yeah. So like I tell people all the time, you know, you can watch YouTube videos of Jerry explaining things all day long, but in, but once you go out and you pick up the phone and you call and you get a contract and you go through a pro that you're going to learn more doing that than anything you'll ever learn, you know, watching videos, right? You got to go through the process. You can learn a lot, but you, you're never going to learn as much or as well as actually doing something. Yeah, because each deal I've done, um, has been completely different and had their own set of issues and their own set of successes, you know? So, um, but we ended up flipping that place. It was only like five or six grand to flip it. And, uh, this nice family bought it and it was just awesome. You didn't do any work to it, right? Or you did? No, we did. So we put like 
almost six grand into it. Okay. Uh, you had to replace yeah. all the floor. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah. So you rehabbed it. You spent you so you spent five, six grand on on a rehab, right? Mm -hmm. That was it. Okay. And so now, you know, so five or six grands, you probably didn't do a whole lot to it. So basically carpet paint. Is that is that about what you did to it? So I would say I kind of took your rehab thing and I do the light, medium, heavy. I yeah. would say it was a mid, okay. like a little bit more than a medium. Um, because most of the subfloor had to be taken out. It was rotted from like, if, if water is the worst thing that could happen, I know to a house, but to a mobile home, especially because it's, no, there's nothing underneath yeah. that subfloor. It's just outside. So, so did you do new cabinets? No, no, I painted them. Okay. Um, I actually like sanded them down and painted them and got new hardware from Amazon. And, and when you say we, did you do the work? Yes. So I actually, it's funny, like I said, when you want something and you, you know, start to do it, things just kind of fall into place. I met a guy and he, like we started dating and I was hiring handymen from Craigslist and the one guy came and he put a nail instead of like, you know, instead of actually doing it correctly. And the guy I was seeing at the time was like, I'm actually kind of offended because you know I know how to do this and you're not asking me to do it. So like he started doing it and I just remember it then it turned into we were doing it. <laughs> yeah, your your date started being over at the mobile home, right? To exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. that's funny. So so he he turned into we, so now you're over there fixing on this. And you, you do the work, you get it fixed up. And then how did you find a buyer? So Facebook marketplace. Okay. And you know, what was so funny is during this time I had acquired two more mobile homes and I started being more active in the Facebook groups. And I met this woman, her name's Sonia, and she had a mobile home that was almost identical to mine, but in a different park, like 15 minutes away. And she ended up bringing me my buyer. Mm -hmm. So it was just crazy how everything. So she, was an, she was another investor in the investor group. Okay. And she was doing mobile homes too? Brand new, just like me. Okay. And she happened to have a buyer looking for a mobile home. So she brought that buyer to you. Now, did you JV with her? Yeah. Um, okay. So you yeah. JV with her and her buyer ended up buying your mobile home. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Okay. And then, so what did you sell it for? I sold it for 15. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So a free, was, a free mobile home. Sold for 15. <laughs> right. But, you know, I stopped doing it because in that area, a lot of people, 15 cash, like you said, there's no financing for mobile homes. Yeah. So 15 cash is hard to get, you know, it's, so, yeah, really hard to get. In fact, a lot of uh, like if you look at mobile home investors, so you ended up going retail, which is a really tough model. But a lot of mobile home investors, they they want you can wholesale and flip to buy and hold mobile home investors. And what they do is they'll buy them from like you for cash and then they'll sell them on owner financing. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's but, typically how they sell trailers. We had encountered an issue with the park manager. Like it, it was really bad. Like it ended up, I had to go to corporate about it. Mm -hmm. And corporate was some company in Colorado. Like it was not even, and I was in Indiana. Yeah. So the fact that I even got a hold of them, and yeah, it was a, it was a big deal. But um, I found on on the way to doing that rehab because it was a full time job. Like we were there, like you know, <laughs> working. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we drove past this double wide, which looks like a house. Like it literally looks like a ranch house or something on a concrete slab. And there was a for sale sign in the window. And I told my partner, my handyman, I'm like, go, go, look, go see, go see. Cause I wanted it. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but it, it becomes like a collectible. They're like your ugly babies. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah. On the for sale sign, like, like a car, it said 13.5. So long story, a little less long, I found out her pain point was that her husband was trying to move to Tennessee for his job. 
So I brought $9,000 cash for her and then turned around. We moved into it because rent at that point was going to $1,900 for my luxury apartment. Mm -hmm. So started paying $535 and we were going to rehab it. But then the handyman relationship, it got, yeah. So turned around. We started making you work at work at the mobile at the, in the mobile home rehab business. I did not expect to do this and I don't have any experience, but if you buy a paint sprayer or a paint gun, you, you become a pro like pretty fast. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's all. You just got to buy it and you're a pro now, right? Yeah, exactly. And watch a couple YouTube videos. Yeah. Then, you're, then you're good. Yeah. Don't, don't get too close with the spray gun, you know? <laughs> so we didn't do anything to that one and we sold it for 18 five. Now, how, how soon after your first one, did you do that deal? I started rank. I started getting them like really fast, um, especially because I told my friends and family about it, and they started being on the lookout for me. Yeah. And that's how I got my second one for free. So yeah. your first deal didn't make a ton of money, but you made money. You went through the process, did a bunch of things wrong. Like you really don't want to ever be self rehabbing. Like that's yes. Because I bet if you did the math, you probably made like four dollars an hour on that deal. You know what I mean? Exactly. Because exactly. your time is valuable. So. So, but, but you went through the experience, you know, here's what I tell people all the time, Ashley, when I hear your story about how, you know, you're out there with your boyfriend, you're, you're painting the house yourself and doing all these things. Um, you know, I'd rather see you do a deal and do it wrong and learn a ton and make a little bit of money that, or even lose money, but do something you're do you're taking action. You're, you're actually doing something rather than sit at home and pretend like you're doing something or learning still, you know, I'd rather see you do that because you'll learn so much about what not to do, what went right, what went wrong. And that will be such valuable lessons for your next deal and your next deal. So I'm just really proud of you for just doing that anyway, right? Like just doing the hard thing the wrong way without having all the answers. That's, that's how you really develop in this business is just you, you fall down, you make mistakes. You try, try, try again. I tell my kids, try, try, try again. Life is about making mistakes. You're going to mess things up. That's normal. That's just how it goes. But what you do about it is where your development comes. Are you going to let it define you or let it, are you going to let that failure prevent you from trying again? Are you going to be afraid of mistakes in life or are you going to embrace it and just go out there, get back on the saddle and go again? And that's how you really grow. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and I think that's what's been happening. I mean, you've been doing multiple deals since then. So, you know, think about your first experience. An agent was super rude, threatened to sue you. You're kind of like, oh, you know what? Maybe this isn't for me. This is hard. This is scary. I don't like getting yelled at. I don't want to be sued. But you got back in. You got back in and you kept going. And that's that's really amazing. Thank you. you. I appreciate it. Um, so what's your plan now? Keep doing mobile homes? Yes, uh, a million times yes. So um, now I have a class of students that want to learn yeah. how to do virtual. And now we're doing prop wire because yeah. initially. Tell, tell me about that. Tell me about prop wire. How's that helpful for you? The best. The be thank you, thank you, thank you. Because myself included, being a brand new investor and trying to even figure out how to work prop stream. $97 a month down the drain because you don't know what you're doing as a new investor. But with PropWire, it's it's literally better, honestly, because there's like, it actually shows you, okay, this house is less than a mile away. It's sold for this amount of money. It's in its mobile homes. It's not houses. And like- You're talking the comp feature or where? Yeah. 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 So just yeah. stuff like that. Um, we actually are running like VAs now where we're having them text blast and everything. Um, and yeah, it's it's been amazing, honestly. I love what you're doing. I'm glad you're using PropWire. I hope that continues to work well for you. It's really cool. Guys, leave a comment and say, Ashley, you're a flipping genius, a mobile home flipping genius. Thank you. Really, really happy that you found like your niche too, you know? I'm happy that I found you that many years ago and like, Cause I remember like in some of the videos you do call us out, you're like, okay, but how many videos are you going to watch before you actually take action? So yeah. Yeah. 
I heard you, so you could keep saying it in your video. Yeah. Awesome. Got a ton of comments here. Uh, you're a flipping genius. Great story. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, thank you everybody. That that is it's it's so true, Ashley. Good job. Really proud of you. It's awesome. Thank you.